And life is so good and so beautiful and so perfectly made that just the way sometimes we feel like, oh, how come I don't fit with everybody, right? The person that's looking for us that doesn't know they're looking for us, they're wondering how come I don't fit with nobody. We'll feel that when we get together. Welcome to the Manders Mindset Podcast. Here you'll find both monologue and interviews of entrepreneurs, coaches, healers, and a variety of other people, where your host, Amanda Russo, will discuss her own mindset and perspective and her guest mindset and perspective on the world around us. Manders and her guests will help explain to you how shifting your mindset will shift your life. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Manders and Mindset. I'm your host, Amanda Russo, and I am here today with Cindy. <laughs> Trying to figure out where the camera For those of you who are not watching this, just wait. So, Cindy, question for you. Mm-hmm. Who is Cindy at the core? Well, I think that is a loaded question because Cindy at the core, right, um, I'm all things. I am nothing. I am everything. You know, um, Cindy is a label. Um, Before I was given a label, I was still a person. Before I was considered a person, I was still a being, you know. So I think that I am energy. I think I am love. I'll fix that. I like to fix that statement. I know I am love. And I know I am all things. So, and I know I'm nothing. Okay. Can you explain how you're all things and you're nothing? Well, <clears throat> I think that might be hard to do, but I, how about I give my best shot, okay? So, I know that it's easier for people to believe that they are a part of this whole existence of life like I am a part of the trees experience I'm a char- part of the waters experience right I'm a part of the experience of the world now at the same time to come to the realization that I am nothing um it's scary and it's beautiful because while I am physically not the tree that's having the experience of me I'm not Amanda, who's having the experience of me, right? I'm Cindy, having the experience of Amanda and all of these things. So I think when, you know, coming to the realization of you know, nothing, what is nothing? It is the blankness, it's the vast nothingness that I do believe that we are. Because at a certain level, right, we have all these things, all these like vibrations and microwaves. And then once you get to that peace, that silence, what is there? Nothing. Hmm. That's what I mean. <laughs> okay. And then there's all things too. So you know, when one thing is existent, the other thing has to exist. So where there is all things, there is nothing. Yin yin. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can you tell the audience a little bit about what it is you do? Your background. Okay. So, um, as you notice, I'm having a little bit of a hard time with labels. That's my thing. Like, I, I always get funny with labels. So, here's the thing. I'm a human. I, my, the services that I offer, um, uh, I'm psychic medium, right? I read tarot professionally. These are all things that are, they fall under the umbrella of, let's say, like, energetic work. Some people like to call it healing work, um, spiritual work advisory I don't know like but there's a lot of different things that you could call what I do at the end of the day what I truly like to say that I do which is like a running joke I do nothing (laughs) I do nothing and it sounds crazy I do nothing right because if you come and see me and you say Cindy like I need you to read my cards I need you to tell me this or tell me that I've never told anyone what to do so I do nothing if I read your cards and the cards are telling you a bunch of stuff I'm holding space while you decide what to do with your stuff right so 
like at the end of the day, like I feel like when people say that, they feel like I'm like kind of like the last thing I said. It's like, are you discounting yourself? No. What I'm doing is giving credit where it really belongs, and it's to the people that actually do the work. I can't take the credit for you when you come to see me and you have a breakthrough. That's your breakthrough. You did that. I get to be lucky to witness it. So, yeah. I love giving the message, though. It's fun. I feel very lucky to do that. Mm -hmm. How did you first get involved in doing that? Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, listen. Here's the thing. I was not born that I can remember having, let's say, ability to speak to people who have passed. What happened was in 2016, my dad passed, right? Now, I was 29 years old. Um, I was a big time daddy's girl. Like that was my guy. I was his only daughter. So I went through a severe, severe depression. And I got rock bottom. Like I had anxiety. I just didn't want to do anything anymore. And um, one day when I was having a really, really, really bad anxiety attack, I was like laying in the shower in fetal position, like just there. And I felt like I just can't do it anymore. I felt like that for a quick second. And then all of a sudden, I felt like I smelled cigarettes in the shower. I felt my dad there. I heard him talk to me. Like, it felt clear as day. And when it happened, because it was happening during, like, an anxiety attack that had just finished pretty much, I was thinking, I'm crazy. This is not. What the hell is going on? That's how it started, like, with the medium shit. Now, the cards, the cards I've always played with as a kid, because... My mom has a lot of sisters and friends and stuff like that. So they used to like hang out and play and hang out with the cards and stuff like that, but not like seriously. You know, they had a little book with the cards with it. And so I used to hang out and, like, well, when I could take the deck and the book, you know how it is. It's your mom's stuff. It's like, I just want to see it. I want to know. But then that's it. Um, I didn't start again until my dad passed because I needed something to keep me entertained. I didn't know how to have fun anymore. So after that incident, when you smelled the cigarettes, how did you continue that? Did you continue? So no, I did not. (laughs) That wasn't on purpose. It wasn't on purpose at all, you know? So I think what ended up happening was um, I continued to um, do the tarot stuff. So while I was doing tarot, is when I started to delve deeply into listening to my intuition. Now, you've taken Follow the White Rabbit, for example. Like, that is a big deal to me because the intuition stuff is where I noticed, oh, wait, here in this little room, let's call intuition a room. Here in this little room, it's like the like where you get all the electricity boards and stuff, right? Not only... Can I sense something? Can I feel something and all these other things? But I can also receive message. That little room right there is where everything started, right? Like within me. So once I basically triggered something within me to realize like, oh, I'm receiving a lot of messages. I just didn't understand how to receive them. I just thought it's a lot of coincidences going on. Now, of course, I know that there are no coincidences. There are only synchronicities to me. That's how it is. Can you? Oh, I have a lot of questions on that. Okay. Can you, to start, explain what Follow the White Rabbit is for the listeners? Sure. So Follow the White Rabbit is a collaborative um, that I have done um, for a little while now with Jasmine at 425 Wellness. Um, <clears throat> that is a class that, um, we did with a lot of love, a lot of love. It is to me more important than even the tarot class that I had before. Um, only because when Jasmine asked me what I wanted to do, like, Oh, what, 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 what would you like to teach? 
I did not want to do tarot because the thing is, is that it's oversaturated and the way that people read tarot, sometimes it gets lost in translation because people get caught up and say, well, the book says that it means this. So how could that possibly, I don't want to get people in a trap. Like basically like, look, if you want to read tarot for real, it starts with your intuition anyway. I don't give up what any person says about the book because the book is not going to tag me and tell me that y'all have got diarrhea today. I know it's crazy, right? But that's a story that I always tell because I stopped reading the book because uh, my mentor told me like, hey, stop reading the book. You need to like use your own intuition. I, re- I stopped. The next day, I was doing readings that had details that weren't in any book. Mm-hmm. That's intuition. So, you know, a lot of putting all of that in, in that room, so to speak, right, helped me to open up in a way that I knew I wasn't ever going to be the same again. Can you discuss <clears throat> what intuition is and what it means to you? Absolutely. So... Intuition is the information that is neutral. Intuition comes from the universal bank of information that we are all all privy to. Now, whether or not we access it is up to us, right? So intuition is, if you had to put intuition into a chakra, your intuition would be, above the neck, up here, okay? Um, Now, a lot of people get it confused with other things and we get into that and follow the white rabbit, but we have to understand that intuition um, is not emotional. A lot of people ask me like, well, how, how can I tell it's not just me like having wishful thinking? A lot of people have wishful thinking, me included. What? I admit faith, girl. I'm like, no, we can do it. We can do it. And no, we can't, right? So <laughs> so the thing is, though, um, that when you get into your intuition and you start to realize like, oh, wait a minute, this is just raw information. It doesn't come out mad. It doesn't come out scared. It doesn't come out anything. It's always after that we attach some type of emotion to it, which is why I usually ask people, did you feel something during or did you feel it afterwards? That's a quick, quick, quick way to figure out was it my emotions or was it my intuition? So you're saying if they felt something during it, it's not intuition. Okay. I'm going to give you an example. Okay. So You guys cannot see this, but right here next to us, I have my altar. On my altar, I do have an aunt of mine. And when I received an intuitive feeling that my aunt was going to pass because she was sick, it was matter of fact. I didn't attach an emotion until after the fact that I got the message from my intuition. When I received the message, then I became sad. Does that make sense? The information didn't come in sad. I attached my emotion afterwards. That's what I mean. So like, let's say um, your intuition goes, hey, um, you're going to win the lottery on Tuesday. That's a great thing, right? Mm -hmm. But you didn't have a feeling attached to it until afterwards. You're like, oh, wait a minute. I'm winning the lottery on Tuesday. You see what I mean by that? So intuition does not have a bias either way. Intuition is the information that we have in the universal bank of information. That's it. So it's like a fact. Like you open up a dictionary. Fact. That's it. Okay. And then we add the stuff to it. Would you say there's any other ways to discern whether it's intuition or anxiety all right so that's the main one that's the main one so ask yourself like so some people like let's make it less dramatic right let's say like oh I don't know my intuition is kind of telling me that I shouldn't go to this new job I get that one a lot 
I get that one a lot, right? Uh, should I go to this new job? Should I do this new thing? I don't know if it's right. Well, first of all, when you receive the information that your intuition is telling you, is it neutral or is it, girl, go, you have to go to this new job because it's going to be the best job you've ever had. And everything's going to be better after that. And there's going to be rainbows and unicorns. That, my friends, is emotion, right? Like, you know, somebody like me, if I allow that to happen, I'll be all over the place. I am extremely emotional when it comes to that. Like, I always want to think something positive is happening, which is good, right? But that's why I know that I have to rely on my intuition and not my wishful thinking and my positive thinking. Okay. <laughs> do you, so do you have any suggestions for people to listen to their intuition better? Okay. So my suggestion is, number one, be still. I've said this so many times. Be the observer, okay? If you ever, ever, ever feel like, hold the hell on, something's going on, I need something, right? Slow down. You need nothing outside of self. You are everything. And when I say outside of self, I mean that because although we need people because humans, are their innate thing, right, is to be together in groups, you don't even need to do that, right? Because naturally you will pull in people, you'll be pulled in by other people, right? So there's so much in there that there is to explore, let's say. So going back to originally what you were saying, which is like, what, what should you do? Right. What should you do to know if this is intuition? Well, number one, be still, be the observer. How do you be the observer? Stepping back and watching your life and your actions as if it was a show or a movie. The easiest way. Why? I'm going to tell you why. When you're watching a show and you see somebody, right, it's like a killer is on, on the loose and then like she's running upstairs and you're like, bitch, no. Right? Yeah, we have so many opinions and we automatically know what to do, right? All of a sudden we're like, if I was her, you see that little rake in the background would have got him. But here's the thing. We can only feel that way because we're not in the shoes of the person who's running away from the killer. So if you take your life and detach yourself for a second from it and look at it like a show, watch how quick you're going to have opinions about your own life. You're going to like, why did I do that? What I should have done was over here, blah, blah, blah. And now next time, things are a little bit different. When we detach from an outcome, um, our intuition becomes our guiding light. We're not too much on the senses of, I feel this, right? Mm -hmm. Because we tend to um, attach or identify with, with what Eckhart told, like to say, the pain body, right? Um, or just, I could just say negativity, right? So like some people say, I'm sad, I'm happy, I'm this, I'm that, really? Or when you ever, when you was little, you ever heard that, I'm hungry, hi, my name is Mom, right? So like, you're not the labels that you identify with. Mm. We choose to identify with those things. So I choose to identify with, my present reality. So when I tell people, look for your intuition in your present reality. That's today, that's right now. Because some people, once they get into intuition, what do you think their first thing is? I want to know what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. Intuition is best used in the present. That's what I have to say about that. And I got to close this up because it's way too cool, girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... You mentioned after the situation, after your dad passed, mm -hmm. how you smelled the cigarettes and you experienced that. Mm -hmm. When was the next experience you had similar Ooh, to that? Oh, girl, you thought you ready for time for a time today. All right, so the next time that it <laughs> happened, this is funny because this happened at my sister-in-law's house. So I was there and I was reading cards. So like my sister-in-law, she's really good because um, when I decided like, you know what, I'm going to 
practice this so to get my, my me out of my shell or whatever. Um, she would always call me over and be like, come on, just come over here, come read the cards, and I'll just go over there and read cards. And then while we're hanging out, my nephew comes in. Now, my nephew says to me, um, Dee, do you ever talk to dead people through these cards? And I literally looked over at him and I was like, I say, oh my gosh. And I'm literally in the middle of reading cards, but we're doing it like not seriously because we're hanging out. It's like a Friday night kind of a thing and everybody's just there. So we're just like reading cards and I hadn't really taken it that serious. I just was playing around with my family. As soon as he said that, um, I want to say it was like a couple of more people walked in and one of them is my husband's cousin. And um, while she was sitting across from me, I looked over at her and I was like, this is weird. I see a gentleman in a suit. Now, I'm not talking about she walked in with a gentleman with a suit. I mean, she did, but not the way you think. It was a spirit. And I was like, oh, I got chills right now. I was sitting there and Isaiah had just asked me if I talked to dead people through the cards. And I'm like, why would you say that? Right. And so I'm looking and I look up and she's like, mm -mm, don't start. And she's like, in Spanish telling me like, mm -mm, I don't want no parts of this. Please don't start with me. And I'm like, no, but I have this message. I don't know what to say to you, but I have to say it. And then she's like, all right, fine. I begin to tell her this story and this stuff that was coming out happened to be her brother. And I was describing things. There was no way I was going to know. I, I had no clue. Her brother is not from that side of the family. Mm -hmm. I had never met him in my life. Wow. And I was describing things that there's no way I could have known. So she's crying. Now I'm shocked. Everybody's looking at me funny. And then that same day, I proceeded to get messages from pretty much every single living, walking person that was coming into that house, was walking in with some type of family member or someone leaving messages. Wow. I did not sleep for over 24 hours because I was mortified. It wasn't like... Oh my God, this is so cool, guys. Yes, love you. I wanted this for Christmas. I can't believe I got it early. No, that's <laughs> not how it was. It was like, oh my God, they're going to lock me up. What is this? Like, I was, think about it. Like, I can, I'm i I'm trying to go to sleep. I, I left her house at, let's say I left at like one o'clock in the morning or something, right? I go home. I can't sleep. Have you ever seen Ghost with Patrick Swayze? Girl, I'm showing my age. All right. I have never seen a lot of that. movies. All right. So listen, there's there's this lady. It's a comedy kind of whatever. Um, whatever. There's this lady. Her name is Oda Mae Brown in the movie. She's played by Whoopi Goldberg. And if you ever see that scene, which before you leave, I want you to see the scene. It's a small scene, right? So she's like sitting there. And she's doing mediumship and the spirits are like lining up. So she's like, God, just be quiet a second. Like I'm trying to concentrate. It felt like that. I felt like there was too much information and I had no training, no nothing to understand how to turn it off. My mm -hmm. husband stayed up with me. He didn't know what to say to me. So he just held space with me. Just let me talk. Let me vent. Wow. And that's how it happened. That was the second time. And then that was it. Then I was like, I'm going to figure out how to control this because there is no way. I'm just living my life, minding my business. Spirits can't just take me away from my life. <laughs> like, I will give a message, but I have a life. So that's when I started to study things like um, protection, how to, you know, shut down when I need to shut down so I can just be. Because... <clears throat> there's a saying, you know, one foot in, one foot out. Two foot out, two feet in, it's always going to have a disconnect somewhere. One foot in, one foot out. So that's how I try to live. One foot in, one foot out. Mm -hmm. Interesting. 
What does that mean to you? Well, for a long part of my life, I had two feet out because I had trauma. Two feet out, meaning I was the fuck out of here. So I could have been here talking to you and not here. That's gone, right? But then when you go two feet in, two feet out, and, and you're going towards spirituality and inner journey, right? One foot in, one foot out is really talking about the amount of time we spend healing and the amount of time we spend living. Some people get stuck healing forever and never take a pause to enjoy the fact that they've healed something. Some people go and continue to enjoy their present without healing a damn thing. One foot in, one foot out. It has to be a little bit of everything. We started this podcast at the beginning. I told you it's the yin and the yang where one thing exists, the other exists. That's what it is. So if you're going to have a foot in, you better have a foot out. Okay. <laughs> okay. So would you would you say that that relates to having balance in your life? Yeah. I'm Libra, girl. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, balance is everything. Balance is everything, right? I feel like balance is something that um, I feel like sometimes I don't necessarily identify with what balance looks like for everybody else. Why? Because balance looks different for you than it does for me. Think about it. Like I have my favorite quote in the whole entire world, and it's been this way for a very long time. This is truth. My favorite quote is, normal is an illusion. What is normal for the, spy, uh, for the spider is chaos for the fly. In this house, it's normal if I'm receiving messages from dead people. My 13-year-old blinks at this, and it's nothing. Like, if he's downstairs with friends, he's like, oh, she's going to go to work right now. It's normal. In somebody else's house, girl, in my grandmother's house, they would have called the exorcist. It'd have been over. They'd have called Ghostbusters, all types of stuff. This would have been a bad time. <laughs> but for us, it's regular. So, you know, a little bit of everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot. It is. There is a lot there. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how were you able to get a better control of the spirits coming to you? You Number said you did a lot of practices and protection. Can you elaborate? Absolutely. On that a little? Number one thing I'm going to tell you that a lot of people get a lot, a lot of people get really, really misconstrued and very confused about me. I love God. Okay. And what God means to me. I don't know how anybody else believes in God or whatever. But like for me, God got me through that. Right. God, because I have unwavering, amazing faith in the source, the universe, the creator, the one. Right. Now, with that and support from my husband and support from my mom. And then support from a mentor, right? These are all things that come one, 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 just like that. It's all about, like, just the way people say it takes a village to raise a child, right? It takes a village to really raise us all, right? Like, I'm not done growing, girl. Like, I can just stop. <laughs> I'm still needing guidance. So, um, number one, having people be understanding with me, you know, like even, even my, my group of people that I would hang out with, like, you know, um, they never made me feel crazy or they never made me feel weird about it. If anything, they're, they'd be like, oh, tell me what's going on. You feel anything here, you know? So, um, anywho, what I have to, you gotta keep me on track, girl. Cause I, I like talking to Amanda. <laughs> um, but I'm I'm working on getting better at not interrupting. So no, I'm here. Don't you, girl. She's so ready. You don't let me talk to her. Just 
Tell me. All right, sorry. Go ahead. Let me talk. Don't let me talk too long, girl. You gotta, you gotta poke, poke me. Tell me, all right, girl. Hold on. Go ahead. Now tell me what happened. <laughs> I don't know either. All right. All right. So I was answering the question, and the original question was. <laughs> I think you answered it. All right. Good. Make sure you edit that. Too. So. I'm curious how you had that experience, you smelled the cigarettes, and you went through it again one other time. How did you make the transition okay. from that to, do you, you know what I'm going to say? No, 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 but I, I, I remember <laughs> what you were saying before now. now was, I'm like, okay, now I see why I was saying that. Okay, yep. <laughs> How did you make the transition to doing it for other people, reading cards for other people? Okay. Giving them readings. How did you make All right. that transition from just getting them for yourself to doing it? Okay, so um, originally, when you were asking about this, um, the how did I, you know, what what did I do? Well, who, my mentor, who went and basically taught me a few things. Right? She said um, a lot of the techniques that I use are due to the way that I learn so i'm very visual so i use visual visualization techniques in order to um let's say protect myself or to shut down um like if i if i go out to a restaurant and i'm on a date night with my husband i don't need these messages i'm going to shut down so that i can enjoy the date night so those techniques, right? And now in order to transition from one thing to the other, I was going through all that, right? So now I'm like, what do I do with this? What's happening? Whatever. So now I'm starting to read these cards, but something switched. The readings that I was giving at, you know, from one day to the other was not the same. It was very specific. Um it would be in conjunction with messages from ancestor spirits, people that have moved, passed on. Um, it was all together in a package deal, just like that. And so um, when that switch happened and I was reading those same people, like my mom, my sister, my sister-in-law, my, my husband even, they started saying like, hold on, girl this is getting kind of crazy. Like it started getting to like the next day, like they're calling me, everything you said in the cards came out. Like my, we would test things out just, just for shits and giggles and be like, what's going to happen when I go out tonight? Just to help me out and see how it would work, whatever. I was getting the same night, like while they're going, like getting ready to go to bed. Like, can you believe everything that you said was going to happen tonight was coming up? So it didn't happen Every single time, oh my God, it's a hundred percent, but it happened to be pretty obvious that something had changed and it got better over time. So um it started with them kind of saying, Hey, you should read my friend. Or hey, like, would you mind like reading this person? Like I was telling them about the reading that you did for me, stuff like that. Then um one day I decided. It's funny because I was deciding between either a podcast or Instagram. And I was like, I don't know what to do. Um, the easier one at the time for me was to open an Instagram because I didn't know where to start for a podcast. I was like, you're just going to open up an Instagram. So it took me a month to do my first reading like on live. So everybody I had read since that first time, though, I was reading just out of word of mouth. When I did that first um, reading online, from that point on, it was just, it spread like wildfire. Fire. Like it was just all, I didn't know where they were coming from anymore. So it just got crazy. It got to the point where then it was like, this is my main job. I, it went from one thing to the other, just very fast, just like that. Okay. And when did you first do it on Instagram? So I think if I go back and look, I think it was November of 2008, 
18 or 19. I don't know, maybe 20. I don't know. One of them times. I don't know. I know it was already a few years ago. All I know is that I was very against it. Why were you against it? I am so shy. Well, I was. Let me fix that. I was. I was so shy. People don't know that about me. I'm Listen, I am still working on it still. When I first, first came onto Instagram, I was like, okay, I'm going to do readings, right? And so I started doing readings, recording just my hands. And so I was like, I can't truly get across what I want to get across with just my hands. So I just shifted it a little bit and there I was. Even still, though, I still get just a little weird feeling in my stomach because it's always weird not knowing who the hell is looking at you. Like, we're doing this right now. What? Nobody's looking at us right now. They will be looking <laughs> at us soon, but that's okay, right? So I have to learn how to get used to that. Okay. Yeah. Did anything help you get used to that? Doing it more and more. Doing it more and more because I used to make up like in my mind how people felt about what I was doing. Like, mm-hmm. I, you know, so I'd be like, oh, they probably don't like it. Or I would just make up things in my mind, like nothing too dramatic either. I was just like assumptions. Right. And then after a while, after I was like, you know, what? I don't even care. I'm not going to have any assumptions at all. How about I don't give a fuck. This is what I'm doing because I like to do it. But when I did that, all of a sudden it was like. Hey, when are you going to do a live again? Or, hey, my friend wants a reading. You should do a website so that people can book with you. Little by little, little by little. Like, everything kind of just went where it was supposed to go. Intuition saved my life, I'm telling you. <laughs> Love that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I agree with that, though. The people that you're meant for will find you. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the ones you're not, that's okay, too. Yeah, okay with that. you know I don't even I don't know if this is a quote or if I heard this somewhere but you don't want to be for everybody you don't want to be liked by everybody for the longest time like growing up I always I always strive to have everybody like me or have a lot of people like me and now I don't even care it's it's for the people who it fits with it resonates with Mm -hmm. and life is so good and so beautiful and so perfectly made that just the way sometimes we feel like, oh, how come I don't fit with everybody, right? The person that's looking for us, that doesn't know they're looking for us, they're wondering, how come I don't fit with nobody? We'll feel that when we get together. That is beautiful. hmm Just keep on looking. You got to keep on looking all the time. Mm. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. That's true. So, what has been the best decision you've made in your life? That is, that was, <laughs> the best decision I ever made. Uh, Which one that comes to mind? Uh, being a mother. And being a mother, I guess that's a decision, right? I plan my babies. Uh, well, not the first. Sorry, Elijah. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, just in, in general, though, right? So, like, I love being a mom. I love being a wife. I love having a family. That's like, Everything to me. Did you always know you wanted a family? Yeah. I I used to be a kid and like assume that everybody gets like a husband or a wife like made for them. Like I just was like waiting for mine. Oh my God. <laughs> I always knew I was going to have a husband. Me and my husband now, we laugh about it because we're like, he used to feel like that too. Like he just knew he was going to be married, that he was going to have a wife. Hmm. I don't know. And I know that everybody feels like that, but I, I did. I did. I just knew that I wasn't going to have a lot of kids. You weren't going to have a lot? Yeah. No. How many kids do you have? Two. <laughs> okay. No. Listen, it's, I just knew because I have five brothers and a sister. Mm-hmm. So I grew up with both because my mom and dad they divorced so like I saw what it was to be a parent to like a lot a little bunch of kids and I always felt like I wanted something different and I got it so I'm happy why did you want something different because I felt like I could see the struggle I was the oldest Mm -hmm. so I could see where my mom or my dad would feel like 
maybe they didn't have enough time or like they wanted to be more present and they weren't able to because of work and stuff like that. And being the oldest, you, you know, I was the one picking up the slack and that I never really got mad at them, but I did empathize in, in feeling like, damn, like this sucks for them. Like, I don't want this. for me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it wasn't because of the kids, like being mad at kids and saying, oh, I don't want kids. It was more like, I want to be able to give my kids what I'm able to give them. And I know, like I, like, for example, I did um, expressive arts teaching for five years and it's cool. You can have like a group of kids and stuff, but like, you know, even when you have that group, you're not, there could be one that definitely needs you, definitely need you to go like this with him or her, right? And you know, you won't be able to do this with him or her if you have this big old group of kids. Mm-hmm. So whenever one of my boys need me, I like to be able to be like this. Like, I want to hear you. I want to hear what you got going on. That's why. Okay. No, that's beautiful. Thank you. I love that. Okay. It's my babies. That's my world. <laughs> How old are they? I have a 19 year old and I have a 13 year old. Mm-hmm. Both boys? Both boys. I do not have a girl. Everybody asks, oh, you're not going to try for a girl. No, because children are not designer handbags. I got boys and I love them. <laughs> That's always such a weird thing. Like, why would you ask them? Are you not going to try for a girl? Like, what is this? Like, one of those little 25 cent machines? Let me see if I get the next carrot. <laughs> That's how people end up with 10 boys or something. <laughs> You're so funny. Oh, my gosh. So, so I want to switch tracks a sure. little bit. Do you have any advice for someone who's looking to pursue a goal in their life? Yes, 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 yes. My number one advice for somebody looking to pursue their goal in life, listen to yourself. Oh my gosh, I cannot tell you how many people I meet that value everyone's opinion before their own. It's so sad. It is so sad. I've, you know, I've seen this and I've had to like speak up sometimes to be like, you know that your opinion's better, right? Doesn't matter who you're asking. I don't care if it's me. You know better than me. You know better than everyone. Okay. For you, when it comes for self, like you, like for example, like your life, what you got going on you now, right? You look so happy. You do. You you look happy to me, right? Now, I don't know your life. I don't know anything that you got going on. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, I don't know the details of your life. For all I know today, you could have been pissed off on the way here. You're not showing it, right? But you know for you, because you could come here and say to me, I need advice on this. But unless I know the whole scope of what you got going on, how is my opinion going to be better than yours? If you have a goal, sit down. Be quiet. Stop talking. Listen. Listen to the silence. In the silence is where everything is answered. Everything is answered. The problem is, is that a lot of us don't speak the universal language because the universal language doesn't go, hey, Amanda, how are you? Here is your message from the universe. And now we're like, wow. I just, I got mascara on my palm. I was like, wow, look at this message now, right? But no, the universe goes, caterpillar, butterfly, sign, license plate, 777. Like, literally, it'll just go giving us all these other things. So we have to slow down. The way you listen to yourself is to slow down. The way to proceed in anything, whether it be a goal or getting the fuck out of a hole, not feeling good, not feeling like you're enough, slow down and be quiet. Take a time out, connect to self, and then you move forward. That's the answer every time to me. Wow. Okay. (laughs) 
That's what I have for you. <laughs> I had another question I wanted to ask, but I feel like you answered it with that. Okay. I was going to ask mm -hmm. your suggestion as to how to know intuitively or in general if something is right for yourself. But would you, I feel like you would say to get quiet. Yeah. That's the, that's the answer every time. You know, some people will ask me, like, how come you're not always, like, online? Because I'm busy being the fuck quiet. I can't be talking 24 hours a day. How the hell am I supposed to get answers? If I'm quiet, I feel at peace, even if I don't hear nothing right away. Because I almost feel like I'm on hold on God's line. I don't, I'll wait there. I don't mind that. I'll wait there for God to pick up. At least I know I'm in queue. I've never been left on that line. God always come to get me on it. So when I'm quiet, I'm able to tap in. I'm able to identify what's going on around me. We get too caught up on what we can see and feel and touch. And, and that's good. But if you don't have your senses right, because that's what all of these you know, vibration sometimes will do. It'll get us to feel like, well, I felt like it was going to be the right decision. You felt it. It wasn't though, right? That's the only way to get past that. That's the only way to bypass all that. Is getting quiet. Yeah. Just get quiet. Do you have any advice for anybody who, when they get quiet, they noticed their monkey brain going off, mm -hmm. a bunch of thoughts running through their head? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what about it though? Any tips to to what to get to get your brain to shut off? Hmm. So here's my take on that. Why the fuck are we pressuring our brains? Why are we bullying our brains? For what reason? Let us become the observer. I'm not going to give my brain no fucking name talking about monkey brain. I know it's a label. I hear it all the time. But I have my issues with that, right? My brain ain't no motherfucking monkey brain, okay? My brain is a queen's brain, a human brain, uh, an honest, loving brain, right? So give me another label. Because guess what? That brain is the reason I process. I need to give that brain some empathy. How about we become the observer, in the brain, come on, brain, please, we need you to be quiet. What? The brain doesn't feel overworked. It, it's fried up right now. The brain's got a relief. Let the brain be. Watch the brain. Instead, allow yourself to become the observer. So while the brain is processing, you can take notes. The brain doesn't just do nothing. The brain's going to show you things. If you notice that your monkey brain is thinking about, let's say, a certain subject, you think it's for no reason? No, that means that's not the So let's become the observer. Let's stop judging ourselves. Let's give ourselves a little bit of empathy. Let's watch, see what happens. Okay, so we have quote unquote monkey brain. So watch the monkey. Now what happens? You think the monkey's gonna go forever? I ain't never seen the monkey go forever. You mean your brain? Yeah. Think forever? Mm -hmm. It won't. You'll have breaks. Nobody just doesn't think. That's an impossibility. We take breaks, and in those breaks, we find that zen, right? That feeling of, wow. But isn't it funny how the moment that we notice it, we're out of it? What do you mean by that? The moment we notice that we're out of it? Mm -hmm. if, if you're in peace, right? If you're in zen, if you're meditating, you found the spot. The moment you notice you are out of it. Mm. That's it. I'm meditating. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. I'm doing the breathing exercise. Oh, shit. It's it's like that. It's almost like when the coyote and, uh, you know, when he notices that he went off the cliff, you know, oh, coyote. the coyote in the, the cartoon, the coyote and the roadrunner. Never seen it. In Looney Tunes. You never seen I haven't. I don't really watch TV. All right, movies. it's okay. So in the cartoons back in the day, okay, 
one of the the main like gags would be like one of the bad guys is like running off of a like a cliff or a building and is running in the air until all of a sudden he noticed that he's in the air and when he notices he's in the air he falls ah oh. that's a, a running gag it's not only in that cartoon it's in many different cartoons that same little gag so they're running off of something and They'll notice when they're already off, like they're in the middle of the air and don't realize it yet. Hmm. And then once they notice, like, oh, wait, they fall. Wow. So what's your take on that? Well, it's back to what I was saying. It's like the moment that you realize that you're meditating, you're not. The moment that you realize, you realize, oh, my gosh, I'm so zen right now. You're not. So it's it's. To me, I've chosen to stop chasing things, not chasing a moment. I'm accepting the moment. I'm accepting the moment that I'm in. So if there's a moment that, let's say I'm other than Zen, because everybody's like, so like, oh my God, floating on clouds. We love everybody. If I have a moment that I'm not necessarily feeling like that, I'm in love on myself instead. I'm going to watch, see what happens. Because maybe I'm not feeling like that because something needs to be addressed. You know? So it's really more about the present moment, right here, right now. Every time. It's always in a way. So. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. It all seems to tie back in. It does. It does. I I've just spent the last five months um, training under Eckhart Tolle and Kim Ang to be a teacher of presence. Um, and one of the main things during these last five months is to learn that I am not a teacher of presence. Isn't that so weird? I don't, can you yeah. explain? <laughs> okay. So, um, there is no textbook way to teach presence. It is through living presence. So I'm not going to sit down and be like, hey, we're going to take a test and you're in my class now and you need to take a test to make sure that you're in the present. Like that doesn't make any sense, right? Presence is taught through living. So today, while we're here together, we've been present here together present here on this present in many different ways so you're present in your body you might not be present in certain parts of your body isn't that so weird so you can be everywhere so nowhere and nowhere at all so um i feel when i say i'm not a teacher of presence or i'm not a healer i'm not you know, any of those labels, it is because I am all things and nothing. And if we get caught up in labels, we tend to want to identify outside of self. Wow. Mm -hmm. Ego gets involved quick, especially in this industry. Ego gets involved quick? Mm -hmm. In spirituality... Whether it be tower reading, yoga, breathing, Reiki, I mean, anything you can think of. There, in any industry, even spirituality, especially I feel like a spirituality, ego can get very inflamed. Because if you have somebody going, oh my God, thank you so much. You've healed me. The worst answer I've ever heard to that is, you're welcome. I would never allow it. Ever in a million years. You say some shit like that to me, you might get cussed out. Like, you know damn well you healed yourself. You better stop it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to be like, "Uh uh-uh, take that power back. That's you. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we have that. (laughs) It's important. It really is. Um, There is not really a lot of space for ego when you deal with other people, like on these vulnerable subjects. It's not ever going to be about me. It's always going to be about the person that's looking for their answer. And I just happen to be lucky enough 
to bear witness to their experience. That's it. I get that. I I relate to that. I've been facilitating breathwork mm. recently, and I gave my first group session, and I did have some resistance with wanting to, I guess, provide space for somebody that had showed up, mm-hmm. somebody I knew from the past, but I felt intuition in me, and I even heard, it's not about you. Mm, yeah it wasn't about you and I got chill because I was like I know I need to go over there and then I was like no no and my mind was like no and then I then I heard I don't know who the hell's fucking saying that but it was like Amanda it's not about you that's right and it's like fuck that's right that's right and that my friend see that is the kind of advice that I live on right there understanding what it means to be in service. Yep. Right? To hold space, to be okay with somebody living their journey without wanting to go, no, no, you should do it like this. That's hard for me sometimes. I don't know why. <laughs> help, I want to help, please. But even that is ego. Mm. Because what makes us qualified to help, to help. Mm. And how do we know what the plan was for this person? Did we just impede on a lesson? Did we impede on them learning to fish so that we could slap them with a fish for a day? I I might butcher this quote, but I, and I heard this recently and I really liked it, but it was something along the lines of you, if you teach, you teach, you know, you know the quote? Is it? If you teach, you if you teach a guy to fish, he'll eat for the rest of his life. If you, mm-hmm. if you, if, if so, if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for the day. night and for yeah, the day. Yeah, yeah. And if you teach him to fish, he'll eat for the rest of his life. Absolutely, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Yeah. Um, I would absolutely prefer for people to learn and do what they got to do for them. Because what the fuck? I mean, I could give you a reading, sure. But what's going to happen tomorrow if something happens that you feel uncomfortable or you're not sure? I don't know better than you, baby. I'm a sinner just like you. We're all God's kids out here, okay? So you got to know how special you are and how important your voice is. Because whatever you see in somebody else, it's only because you can see it from yourself. We can only see and perceive what is in our own selves. When you process, mm. when I process, watch this, right? Uh, let's use this, right? So I'm not all week up. So we have this bottle of water. In order for me to understand, in order for you to understand and process this information, what happens first? We go through the senses because obviously there are people who are blind, so this doesn't always apply to that. But first of all, my eyes take in this information. Now, Does this water bottle, the vision of the water bottle stay here? Absolutely not. The brain goes to work immediately and sends it back here, right? So now what happens is now back here, now we're calculating, okay, what the fuck is this? Now we're figuring out the the colors and everything. Now it reflects back. Now we've got a water bottle. If I'm not processing this information, it does not exist to me. Hmm. That's why a lot of people think seeing is believing, but that's not always the case either. Why do you say it's not always the case? Well, because I can tell you this is a bottle of water, but what if I put some liquor in it? What if I put some vodka? That's true. It's, maybe it's a bottle of water for somebody, not for me. You, you know what I mean? Like, like somebody can call themselves um, a guru and have people follow them. Not for me. Like, I might look at this person and go, no, thanks. This looks like a cult, right? You know what I mean? Like, it's all dependent on that. So whatever we're processing, it is for us. It is for us. You're here in front of me today. Before you got here, right, whatever, you're living your life. I wasn't existent in your mind in that way. Like, even if you had a thought of me, okay, you had a thought, whatever. But your life was still going. Yeah. I wasn't in it. 
That's true. Your life is not for me. Your life is for you. No, that's true. I'm actually in a mastermind course Mm -hmm. and the instructor, Sean, was talking this week about lessons we've learned and how she could experience the same exact situations I've experienced and it might be an easy life for her Absolutely. because she didn't need those lessons. Mm-hmm. I needed those lessons mm-hmm. to learn and to grow into who I am. Yes. Same thing with you, for example. Like Anything you've experienced, even if I experienced it, it wouldn't necessarily be the same. Yes. I completely agree with you, which is why I tell people not to get so caught up in how. Like, people will ask me a lot, like, oh, well, how did you learn? Listen, I can tell you, what is it going to do for you? How did you learn what? Anything that I I do. Anything that I do. They'll be like, how'd you learn tarot? How did you learn how to talk to people who have passed? You know, or Mm -hmm. how did you learn NLP? Like, these are all things that people, like, want to, like, you know, open up about. And fine, I can tell you exactly my my route, but my route wasn't for me. You got to find your route and be okay with your route. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we touched a little bit on tarot cards and you mentioned about not getting too, too caught up in what the book says. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for anybody just starting out reading cards? Because I feel like that's a popular thing even more so recently. Mm -hmm. So any tips for anybody beginning that? Okay. My advice for you, if you are working on tarot and getting to know your tarot deck, please read for yourself first. Please don't go reading for other people first. I feel like it's important that you know what it feels like to take your own advice. You need to know what it feels like for you to see what you see. Um, The other thing that I would say is once you're comfortable, like I think everybody should know like the base reasoning behind each card. Cool. You could read for that. But the moment that you have that, put it away, put it away and practice using your intuition. Everybody gets mad at that part because they're like, no, but I don't know. But you do know. The problem is, is a lot of us like to go and discount us. So you mean to tell me you would prefer to give me the credit that I can read tarot cards? Why? We can both read tarot cards. Why not? Read them if you want to. But don't ever discount yourself. And the the intuition part is is an important piece. Because you know if me and you read cards on the same thing, we could touch on the same things, let's say. But we'll filter it differently. And sometimes it's actually kind of fun to see other people's perspectives. On how they're filtering the information. So, yeah. Believe in yourselves. <laughs> yeah, that's my main advice. It's always going to go back to self. It's always going to be like, you, be your biggest cheerleader. That kind of energy is like the fountain of youth. The fountain of youth? It is, yeah. And when I mean that, I don't mean like physically. I mean like internally. You know, like when I was a kid... I felt like I could play for hours. When it was time for bed, it'd be like, why? I'm not even tired right now. Right? And then being an adult, it's like, I can't wait for bed. Right? There's sometimes there's a lot of stress going on, right? Let's say, right? Can't wait for bed. Oh, my God. Like, you know, I'm tired all day. I wake up in the morning. No. So the fountain of youth really, to me, means to find that childlike joy, you know, that you're so excited that it's almost like, damn it, why does bedtime have to come? You know, that to me happens with this work, to be honest, which a lot of people will laugh because they know that I'm up at three, four in the morning, like on live, like, you know, reading cards or like I'll have late night appointments even like with people who work late or they have a busy, hectic schedule. I've read people like at one o'clock in the morning, just hanging out. Like that's what brings me joy is to move using my intuitive senses is to be grounded in the moment that I'm in. Those things bring me true joy. Wow. That's beautiful. Thank you. You have any suggestions for people to find what brings them childlike and a joy? Yes. Oh my goodness. My very first suggestion the way that you want to do it is up to you. Some people do it just like as a visual um, auditory like exercise. Some people actually write it and stuff like that. 
But the very first thing I like to ask people is, right off it, like right now, like what brings you joy? What's the first thing that came into your mind? The gym. The gym. Boom. Do you know that some people, like just that right there, will immediately put them into this going back and forth and trying to find the information? You know, like in NLP, we know when the when the brain starts to process the the eyes will start to shift in looking for the information. Your eyes stay pretty fucking still, which leads me to believe that you've already thought about this or have it very forefront in the forefront of you, like of what makes you happy. That's a beautiful thing. You know, like some people won't even know, let's say, what's your favorite color right now? Or, you know, what's your favorite food to eat right now? It doesn't mean forever. I'm just asking you right now. Yeah. Those those practices, although they seem so small and insignificant, it is a practice for a reason. We, like, imagine asking yourself every day for a week, what's your favorite color today? That's so weird, right? A little. Well, I'll tell you why. Because let's say you wake up on Sunday and you're like blue. And maybe every fucking day you, you're like blue, blue, blue. And then... Maybe Thursday comes. And then you ask yourself and you're like, I don't know why I've been saying blue. It's really purple. It's the it's the delving into it. So we might think that one thing is who we are, is again, identifying with labels. My favorite color is blue. My favorite color is blue. And then one day you might be like, you know what? I got space for purple. I like purple. Or you might be like, no, nah, I like hot dogs. Hot dogs my favorite food. And then all of a sudden, it's like, you know what? I lied. I don't even like hot dogs. Like, I love steak. You know, like, it could be something like that. But the point is, is, is to question yourself. How often do you question yourself? Sometimes we get into this thing of like, no, I know. I know everything about myself. Then when somebody asks you something, you go searching. Like, you don't know where it is. So how well do we know ourselves? That's our responsibility. So I, I question myself at every corner. Mm-hmm. Like, who am I today? Because we get caught up in like, like we're going to be the same person for like 10 weeks or like whatever. Like there's like a certain time frame. We don't know. Actually, we're evolving every day. I might be this version of myself today. What if tomorrow something absolutely fantastic happens to me? My whole life changed. I might be another person. That's true. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why, again, disconnect from the labels. Just kind of like flow in what's happening right now. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I can't get caught up on that. And even if you think about, like, who you were in the past, Mm -hmm. that I feel like could give everyone a perfect example about how labels and identities are constantly changing. Yes. Because even... I answered easily and quickly with what brings me joy being the gym. Four years ago, pr- four years ago was when I first started even working out. See? So prior to that, I wouldn't have said that. But I don't know what mean- my answer would have been, but it wouldn't have been that. And but so, it doesn't make it any less true. No, right? Exactly. But it also is a perfect example to show you, yes. like, visually, how that's so true. Yeah, absolutely. Even thinking about yourself, even... Two years ago. Yeah. A year ago. Six months ago. Well, yeah. And then and then look at, like, for example, like me, 10 years ago, I wasn't doing all of this. 10 years ago, if you would have told me this, I'd have been, like, laughing on the floor. I'd have been like, yeah, right. Tomorrow, that's what's going to happen. I'd have laughed myself out. But it's not for us to understand what's happening in the future, which is why we always have to be here. Mm-hmm. Right? right? Because then we get caught up in the how who cares it's gonna happen <laughs> that's what it is i love it mm-hmm. see yesterday now and tomorrow so what i'm showing <laughs> her is a flag that i have that's above my altar that has um tomorrow and yesterday crossed, crossed out. out and then, and then and now it's in the, right in the middle and that's it's there for a reason. I have to remind myself that all the time. It's to be present. It's to be here, to be the observer, to take responsibility for the good things too. Because a lot of the times we take responsibility for only the shit that goes wrong in our lives. Mm-hmm. And then give the responsibility that all the good things that happen, we go, oh my God, thank you so much. You saved my life to other people. 
we got to give that same love and that same appreciation to the person that lives in us. Okay. To the spirit that lives in us. A quote I heard that I loved in terms of present moment. I'm big into the quotes Mm -hmm. was you're not nowhere. You're now here. Because mm. nowhere is spelled the same way as same letters. Now, here. You're not nowhere. You're <sighs> now here. Oh, wow. This is a great one. Yes, I love that. That's fantastic. So I do also want to add something, right? Because um, anytime I get with someone who is doing like, you know, the work, when I say the work, I literally mean just out here sharing our experiences on what it looks like to go on a journey, right? Because your healing stuff may not be all good for me and mine might not be all good for you because it's all individual. But the point is, is that we're here and we're sharing the information, um, which creates community, which in turn gives people a place. Okay, Mm -hmm. so what I did want to share that um, there are plenty of different um, vias to heal. Right. Um, And it's really all about what's going to be good for you. Right. So how I was going to ask you a question, but I feel like did I ask her a question? You can ask her. find like what was good for you for your healing stuff like what 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 was that like for you I think it all ties back into intuition Mm -hmm. and like it's just a knowing Mm -hmm. and something I even heard on a different podcast once talking about intuition emphasized how it doesn't always make sense Mm -hmm. a lot of times it won't make any sense whatsoever Mm -hmm. and one of my Biggest examples of this is when I quit my my law office job. Oh my goodness! Not the most recent one, the one before that, with no plan. Mm-hmm. I had no clue what I was doing. I don't know why I did it, but I was like, "This is not it," and I didn't want to be talked out of it. I told no one. I walked into my boss's office, didn't even know what to say, so I was just like. I need to talk to you. And then I stood there for three minutes and said nothing. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. Oh, my gosh. And I was also very scared. So I gave a two months notice thinking, that'll help me. Yep, yep. But it made no logical sense. And everybody was like, what are you doing this for? And I'm like, it's, it's not right for me. Yes. I don't know. Yes, yes. I figured it out. And even in terms of healing and different modalities that I've used, it doesn't even always make sense. Even the first time I ever did breath work, Hmm. I was unemployed at the time. I didn't even really understand what breath work was. Mm -hmm. This girl that I knew from four to five, actually, Mm -hmm. that I had gone to yoga classes with had been talking about it. She was hosting a pay what you can class. I'm like, yeah. And I didn't know what it was. My mom was like, what what is breath work? I don't something like meditating. I don't know. I had no idea. I had no clue. And here I am now facilitating. I love that. I love that. And ayahuasca was the same way. I've done ayahuasca, but the first time I ever heard about it was from an ex-boyfriend. And at the time I was like, I would never drink something in the woods. That's just going to make me puke. I wouldn't do that. I'm like, like that's not me. I'm too good for that ego. Mm -hmm. Fast forward a little bit. We broke up about a year later. I went to the same place and did ayahuasca. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. So that must have been amazing, though. I mean, I can, you have so much to, to talk about. It's right that you have a podcast because, like, you have all that. So, um, yeah, again, there's so many different ways. And look at you've done all these different ways. Like, I haven't done ayahuasca. I've thought about it. But I really do believe, like, there's a saying that the medicine calls you. And when she calls, you'll know. you'll know, right? Because I had heard about it that first time and he had two good friends that I, I was pretty good friends with as well. I should do that. And I'm like, no, like the woods and I'm going to drink something and I'm just going to be like puking and no, I'm good. I'm good. No idea. Then fast forward a little bit. I started hearing more about it and I was like, hmm, let's get into this. That same law office that I ended up quitting. He never gave me any vacation. For the moment, gave me a July vacation that he was taking. Three weeks before, 
I registered for an ayahuasca ceremony. I love the I, way that works. I didn't want anybody to talk me out of it. So I told everybody I was going on a yoga retreat. Oh my God. Don't do that, y'all. Sit with advice. Tell someone if you're doing ayahuasca. Yeah. For safety reasons. Just tell someone. Absolutely. Okay. Wow. But wow. I don't think I was talking out of it. I told, I told my best friend the day of, the day okay. I was driving them because I was like, oh, fuck. I'm going to do ayahuasca. So you started it. feeling it on the way. <laughs> I said, yeah, the nerves. Yeah. Because yeah, I was like, because I would have had nerves the minute that I said, okay, yeah, I'm going to book. Well, it's been worth though me not telling anybody. I'm, oh my God, nobody knows. Yep. Did you go along with people that you knew though? No. But I'm like, okay, my ex boyfriend went to this specific retreat. Okay. He came back alive. I should too. I make a lot of rash decisions yes. in life, but okay. they, they come out as great stories. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. This should be the whole premise of this podcast. This is crazy. But yes, I told my best friend Andrea the day of that I was driving to New Hampshire because I was almost shitting myself. And I told the guy I was talking to at the time. And he's like, what if something happens? Who do I contact? Well, I'm like, oh. my mom's name is Sharon. You can find her on Facebook. Even more less. Not Facebook. Oh my God. You are a girl. What the Something if my best friend ever, Nemo, if you see this, I want you to know that I will call your mother so fast. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. So then, so, so whatever. So you get there, you do your thing. And oh, I, I was scared shitless when I first got out there. I was even well in the middle of woods, in New Hampshire. Okay. I liked that I could drive myself there. I felt like safer. Okay. I get there. I'm in the middle of bum fuck fucking nowhere. Mm-hmm. I see some girl that looks kind of friendly. So I roll down my window and I'm like, am I in the right spot? Don't even tell her where I'm supposed to be. And she's like, yeah, come on. I'm like, I I get my stuff. We start walking. And she's like, hi, I'm Christina. Introduced to myself, whatever. She's like, have you ever done this? I'm like, no. And no one even knows I'm here. So she's like, me neither. It's okay. Oh, so you found your tribe. (laughs) No, come on down. Yeah, I did. And... Once I got to the actual place, there were two guys that, I wouldn't say I was friends with at the time, but I was acquainted with. Yeah. I had met who the guy I was talking to at the time, actually. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, my God. They had no idea who, how they knew me, but I knew them. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I was there Friday night, Saturday, and I left Sunday. I also did something called Combo. Have you heard of that? Yeah. Okay, so, so, wow, girls, you, you went all out, okay, <laughs> she got the combo situation, so she got, all right, so you felt, so do you, so do you feel, do you feel that it was worth it, did you, like, what, I would say it was worth it, yeah, yeah? did you learn things, were you downloaded things, were there messages specific for you there? I thought about every single experience that I have ever had in my life. What? The good ones, the bad ones, every experience I've ever experienced came to my head. Mm. I I journaled so much. I wrote like probably 70 pages just worth of different shit. Have you gone back to read? Yeah. And the, like, how does it, does it resonate at all or does it sound? No, it made sense. It like it sense. was scribbles, but I yeah, can yeah, read yeah, it. Yeah, Nobody yeah. else really can. But I, it made a lot of sense to me. I processed a lot of things. I thought about things in different perspectives than I ever had. Okay. Did, did you have an ego death? I, it's ironic you say that because I felt like I did. And I said that to a few people. Um, it was actually ayahuasca that made me realize I didn't want to be a lawyer. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Cause I have, I, I do know, um, I know some people that have taken ayahuasca personally and you know, I do know that um, one of their experiences, he has said like, oh, that he definitely 100% had an ego death. And, you know, the way he experienced it, you know, sounded uh, very specific. But I do know, generally speaking, that a lot of people that do have the ego death part have some major changes come afterwards. So what are some of those that happen to you? It was five months later, I quit my job with no plan. <laughs> okay, wow. Yeah, that is enough for me. Okay, so yeah. So was everybody worried about you? Yes. 
Okay. So they knew already at that point you took ayahuasca. Were they blaming ayahuasca? Oh, oh no, not everybody knew. Ooh. Not everybody knew. I still I haven't told everybody. Oh, but everybody's like, Amanda, you can't just quit a job. Well, it's a little too late. <laughs> that is. Oh, actually, let me backtrack. I quit it sooner than five months. Then I got nervous and anxiety kicked in. So I asked to keep the job. So I kept the job. Oh, then I was like, yo. Then I gave another notice and I actually left. No, see the end. Oh my yeah. God. Well, well you, you should be proud of yourself though. Did I ask in July? I gave my first notice in August. Anxiety kicked in. I took my notice back two weeks later. Then I, everybody's like, no, you can't quit. And then take it back and then quit again right after. So I stuck it out for about three more months. Then I gave him a notice and was actually done. Okay. Listen, I, I this it is all making lots of sense now. It's all making lots of sense now. So you are living just your very best life. That's what that means to me. Like, you know, this is somebody who's just following what they believe to be true for them. So I love that for you. You know, um, have you had any other experiences with any of the other um, plant medicines? I've done psilocybin quite a bit. Okay, so have I. Okay, so have you hallucinated on the psilocybin? And not really. Okay, because my experience with psilocybin, so um, I think me and you had this conversation before. Like I had the gastric bypass, the sleeve done. Um, so my belly's like a banana, right? Like it's like small, but the thing is, is that I think so. I'm definitely not a scientist. I'm a psychic medium for sure, not a scientist. So, well, I don't know if this has anything to do with it. So that's why I want to talk to you about it real fast. I had the shrooms, whatever the psilocybin, okay, and I don't know if it's because I had the gastric bypass, but this hit me like. I I was asking people their experiences. Nobody else's experiences were like mine. And the only people who did have experiences like mine were also people who had the gastric bypass. So uh, meaning like the whole entire time. So first of all, I last for like two hours straight. Like I could not stop laughing. Cool. Fine. Okay. Fine. I was looking for more of a spiritual <laughs> like opening or something. But then all of a sudden, I started to severely hallucinate. Like I was not here. I was in the living room. The living room completely disappeared. All the people in the living room disappeared. Um, then all of a sudden, everything was like a cartoon. And then I was being carried into this cartoon water by this cartoon giant guy. The giant guy brought me into the water. I was like, hey, I'm going to leave you in the water now. And you're going to be okay, though. And I was like, okay. And then I was like in the, the colorful water. And I was a cartoon. <laughs> and then I saw these little green people. Okay. Now, before you start looking at me crazy, I want you to know that I have done some thorough research on the green people. Other people have done shrooms and seen the green people. Look it up. I believe you. I believe me, too. Okay. <laughs> So I also saw the earth breathing, which is an impossibility because I was in my mom's apartment. I thought you were going to say something else. No. Mm -mm. So I saw the earth breathing. Like I was literally like looking and it was like a tree stump and it was like breathing up and down, uh, like all that stuff. Right. But I will say that after that experience, I had a very deep appreciation for mother earth like i'm not like really an outdoors girl which is weird because the, the years are going on i feel like i'm becoming an outdoors person it's like weird like i, I the next day like i w never did it again because i was like oh it was only a one-time thing yeah so i did there was two experiences there was two experiences it was twice but literally they were opposite from each other the first one was like all this wonder and oh my goodness all these things i saw the second one was like Oh my God, I'm going to die. I felt like my clothes were eating me. Like it felt like I was suffocating. I was like, I need to leave this. I need to leave my mom's house right now. What's happening? But, but yeah, so that was enough for me because I was like, okay, I don't think there is anything else calling me there. I think that the purpose for me for that was to remind me of my ashes to ashes, dust to dust mindset that I feel like I have which is like we come from the earth and go back to the earth kind of a thing 
Like I get that I that's where my body's going, you know, mm -hmm. to the earth, whatever it is. Like, you know, my spirit is what belongs alive everywhere. So I don't know. It's just like that whole thing kind of like came together for me in, in a feeling of like there's so much in this universe to um, explore and heal with. And, and it made me think of all of the things that I've been paying attention to that really aren't important. Mm -hmm. It was weird. Like I, I had um, a training session with my trainer and obviously I was not telling her that I had done shrooms the night before, but like at the end, you know, when they like cool you down and they stretch and then like you're hearing nice music, I'm like on my yoga pad sobbing okay <laughs> because I felt so grateful <laughs> to the universe for all of God's living creatures <laughs> and she's like oh my god are you okay and I'm like yes I'm just so happy <laughs> was this like a gym trainer yeah because I'm like I, I literally she's like because you know you gotta do child's pose here like this like my head is on the mat and I felt so much love from the earth. I was like, the earth loves me. And like, I'm so lucky to be here. And I'm like crying, like profusely crying. But um, but yeah, I just wanted to share that with you as well to say, like, you know, I know that people get curious about uh the plant medicine, but I really, really, really have this thing that if it's not calling you, then it's not for you. Mm -hmm. You know. I agree. And I would also say, just because it's not calling you right now, doesn't mean it won't ever. Yeah. I wasn't called to ayahuasca in 2020, 2021, but come spring of 2022, I started hearing about it. I started contemplating it. I personally didn't want to go out of the country because I was telling no one. So, yes. But I started considering it. Like, if it's for you, you'll know. If it's not for you right now, it might be at some point, but it's yes, not right now. Exactly. Just because it's for somebody else, <laughs> if it's for somebody else you're really close with. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's for you. Exactly. And that's okay too. Yeah. Because well, think about it, right? Like I told you I had two trips. That second one, I, I was not being called. I was curious. I was like too excited about the whole concept of like, oh, this is a healing thing, right? And I go to take it again, but I wasn't being called. So guess what happens when you're not invited? <laughs> okay so i had a very bad experience that second time so that's why i feel like you know what listen to your intuition like listen if you're being called go ahead you know but if you're not being called don't force it it's not a fad to me no absolutely so i yeah. agree i yeah. i think that's with everything yes even, even the gym like i love working out and bodybuilding and strength training but that's not for everybody mm. i think movement universally is yeah but maybe you're a yogi Maybe you love running. Mm. Maybe that's how you love to move. Mm. You know? Yeah. Same concept. Yeah. Every every person, uh, once they get to like individualize um, themselves and everything that happens in their life, like being an individual just means allowing your life to play out for for you, right? Not what the normal is. What what's normal anyway? Remember my favorite quote. Okay. What is normal for the spider is chaos for, for the fly. fly. Okay, so yeah. I remember. Yeah, all the quotes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you need to like rewrite all the quotes. You need to have like a page like on your Instagram where you just go through your quotes. I love that. <laughs> I used to be called the quote queen. I believe it because you have like, and they're like right there too. Like reminds me of this quote: nineteen sixty five. I love that though. I love that. I like me and my son, we give each other Snapple facts and shit like that. You know, like we'll just randomly know something and just say it. Why not? That's like I tell people if you're going through something, I can find a quote that will help you. Yeah, tell yes. me what you're going through and I, I got you. I love I got that. you on quote. You should do that on Instagram. Tell me your problem. I'm going to give you a quote. <laughs> yeah, well, that will that would be a funny one i would love that i would definitely be in there handing over problems give me a quote amanda please <laughs> that is so funny oh my gosh so is there anything else you want to tell the listeners before we wrap up so we didn't get to speak <laughs> here i am again we, we didn't, didn't get to speak um on something that 
um, that is really, 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 really important to me, um, other than the things that I do, right? Which is, um, I am trained in NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, and CLS, New Code Linguistics. These are all things that have to do with linguistics and um, the way people talk, the way that they process and the way that their eyes move when they're processing. This is all really important information. I think that moving forward, that is going to be the next step for um, those of us who are in this community of, again, journeying. I like to call it just journeying. Like just We're out here just looking and finding and exploring, right? Should be into linguistics because a lot of us are fucking putting in the work and don't realize how badly our language is, uh, is, is processing. You get what I'm saying? So if we think of our brain as a computer, the brain is given directive initially by us and then carries on their programming forever until we stop it and reprogram it. So it's really important moving forward. Let's say like we're having this conversation right here. Before you leave today, I wanted to make sure that I say this, not only to you and because of you, but like for everybody, like just to give a reminder, some of the things that you should completely take out of your vocabulary, not only you, all of us, anything that is on the negative end, can't, won't, don't, shouldn't, couldn't, wouldn't, all of those things when it's Coming to describing anything about yourself or anything like that, it is beneficial to delete that from the vocabulary, okay? The reason for this is because it will go against everything that we're actually trying to do with our language. The last thing we need is ourselves fighting against ourselves, our language kind of fucking up our actions because... The brain goes, well, I know you want to do this, but you're saying this. So let's just go with that. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if I told you, hey, Manders, um, don't think of a pink elephant, please. Damn it, Manders, I already know what you did. Right? You know, and we can't help that. What's the first thing you tell a kid when they come in? Hey, mira, don't touch this. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to want to even more so. Of course. Now, now it's glowing. Now I got it. That's even like. I talked about on a different podcast about one of the things that helped me the most with losing weight and building muscle because I lost about 60 pounds. Wow. Was I didn't focus on taking away anything at the beginning. I added in. I added more water. I added more movement. I added more steps. I didn't take away anything. Mm -hmm. I didn't stop drinking. I didn't take away sugar. Nothing right away. Yep. Because... I had heard, and I don't remember where I heard this, but you are telling yourself you can't have, say it's brownies. You're going to want brownies even more so. Just like when you were a kid, mom says, no dessert till yeah. I have dinner. All you want is that fucking dessert. Absolutely. So by simply not restricting myself, I'm not feeling deprived of it. So you see right now the sense is by simply not restricting myself, tell me what you were doing. I was adding in the good. Everything else is irrelevant. By adding in the good, I was feeling good, blah, 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 blah. You see? So language in itself, even when we mean the best, is so important. I'm going to give you a, a positive example rather than a negative one because I want to make sure that I'm putting on you. If I'm putting anything on you, it's going to be something positive, okay? Let me give you an example. Most people, and you guys can attest to this, okay? Most people, when they tell a story... They tell the story generalized, not because they're evil or anything like that, but because that's the way a lot of us speak. They say you in their story. So if I'm talking to you and I'm saying you, what do you think the subconscious is taking in? That it's you. So here's the example. You can even count how many times I say you, right? You know... When you go to the gas station, you know, and, you know, you go away in the line or whatever, and you're having such a good day. And then you're like, you know what? I need to remember to play the lottery. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then so I went to the um, cash register and I was like, all right, I'm going to get a lottery ticket. So you know how it is when you about to win the lottery or whatever. Yeah, I was having a great time. Boom. Then I go home. 
And you know what it is. Like I was winning the lottery and I was having making all this money and you was winning the lottery. But you know how that is? Now imagine how many stories you've heard with things of the negative end, right? So somebody might say something like, yeah, I was stuck in traffic. You know how it is to be stuck in traffic. Delete that suggestion. It sucks. You see what I'm saying? Like people will go and tell you a story about them and say you, their whole story. Mm. So I wanted to leave everybody with that because I think it's, for me, it's one of the more important things that I'm going to be into this year is being able to bring that to the forefront because um, I think a lot less of us know about the linguistics part than, you know, than most of us even think. I think when we get into that pattern of um, learning how to kind of hold each other accountable, imagine how sharp we're going to be for me to be like, excuse me, did you just say can't? Did you say don't? You didn't? So what you're doing, right? To be able to cut off these kind of things and directives is to reprogram your whole entire thing. When we are reprogramming, it just runs smoother. We are crisp with our, you know, um, communication. What ends up what ends up happening is we're receiving everything that we want because everything that we want is done through communication, whether it's verbal or not. It doesn't matter. That leads me to so much. I know. <laughs> We can do a part two. Um, we can talk about linguistics because I, it's so fun to be able to kind of go back and forth and be like, hey, you know, what did you mean? Because you actually said this. And if you get your stuff picked up on so much, you start to actually think within yourself, wait a minute, why did I do that? Why did I state it like that? You can go and test this on anybody you know. Go and ask them something like, oh, well, um, i give you a, an easy one, right? Between girls, like you'd be like, hey, so what are you looking for in a guy, like in a relationship? What are you looking for, right? And so somebody might say something. Well, um, all right, what I'm looking for, well, what I don't want. I literally just asked you, what are you looking for? The brain will process whatever it is this person is saying, okay? So it's like, when I ask somebody something and their answer is directly into the negative, I try to do my best to kind of like, let's delve into that. You know, why is it like that? You know, so we'll do, you know, another time. I, I did want to leave everybody with that because I want everybody to be mindful of, of what they're speaking into themselves. I want everybody to realize that they're a walking altar. I want everybody to realize that they're all special, just as special as the most special person in the world to you. Whoever you think is the most awesome, fun, cool, worthy person, you are just as much as them. Okay. So this is why it's so important for me to leave that message because that's like part of my job in life, I feel like, is to remind people that they're worthy, to remind people that they should keep on going, to remind people how bright their light is and how important their light is. Now, I might not be qualified to remind you, but I don't care because I'm going to go yelling from the rooftops, hey, you're wonderful, even if you don't need a reminder. So maybe one day somebody might need a reminder and maybe in that moment they might remember that I yelled from the rooftop that they were wonderful. That's good enough for me. We need more safe places in this world no, so, right so be a safe place <laughs> love that um I do just want to add to that I tend to emphasize a lot being cautious I even discuss this in a different podcast but being cautious about what you say about yourself yes what you think about yourself because the universe doesn't recognize what is real and what's not and I use this example. I told my mom on a Wednesday, no way in hell I'm going to be woken at this law office by the end of the year. How are you going to give a notice? They love you, blah, blah, blah. The same law office was relocating and I was going to lose my beautiful office and have a cubicle come the next month. And I told my best friend, no way in hell. I'll be dead before I go to a cubicle. Mm. I got laid off two days later. Wow. Yep. 
So, yeah, <laughs> you don't even have to say it. Then I know it. I know it because yeah. that's the thing that when, when you move that's on that best. intuition, right? When you move on to that intuition, the table gets set for you, right? Because you just, you already, you're arriving. That's what it is, right? And then you, on top of that, using the positive language upon yourself and your situation, right? You know, this is alchemy at its finest. I'm going to take some and make it gold, okay? So they gave you a, a laid off, and what did you do with it? You went and you ran. Look at you. Yep. Mm-hmm. You ran with it, absolutely, as you should. I agree. Yeah. But that I just, be cautious what you say, because, you know. Yes, the, I do you know. know. The universe works and sometimes moves in ways we necessarily wouldn't. I agree with you, 110%. So I have one more question for okay. you. Okay. So I wanted to approach the podcast in a way where it wasn't only questions from me. Okay. And I asked my best friend to come up with a question to ask the guest. Okay. And she's wondering, will you hope to see yourself in three years from now? Ooh, three years. I like that it's the number three. My birthday is the third. So three is a good one. Um, Three years... I would like to see myself uh, traveling more. You know, my kids are big and my husband and I are in a very unique situation because we had our kids really young. So we've been together for such a long time that I think now we're really focused on what makes us happy, like we were talking about today, right? What 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 is interesting to us? So to be able to travel while working. So I love what I do so very, very much. You know, there's like even songs that say like, I feel, you know, this fuck a vacation. I feel better at work. That's kind of like how I feel sometimes. Right. Because even like, whatever you have one day you're at the pool and then I'm like, maybe I should record a little content. <laughs> maybe, I have to take a picture of this because I have a message to give, right? Like there's things that happen there. So like, I want to be able to mesh them a little bit better. Like um, this year I was lucky enough to um, be asked by Jasmine to help co-host the uh, Womb Wellness Retreat in Panama, which she's going to do another one this year. Um, and obviously like, that's what I mean. Like, you know, she was doing her stuff, her content, like womb wellness, and I loved it. And so I would like to see myself traveling for my things that I'm interested in and teaching. Um, being able to do that, I think, is where I would see myself in three years, even before then, to be honest with you, just because I know how very laser focused I am right now on the bigger picture. So I see. Oh, that's awesome. Just the FYI, that is not my intuition talking. That is absolutely my wishful thinking. <laughs> I really, I, and we'll see what happens. I'm always open to what my future is going to bring. I'm going to be flexible right here. I'm right now. I get it. Now, before we close out, anything else you want to leave the audience with? I would want to leave the audience with, please continue to always, always, always be curious, be curious, be curious. Okay. Go looking for your answers. Don't just take something for what somebody else says, test it out, find it out. Um, this is important because a lot of us just take things, whatever somebody's saying as, as law and it's okay to question stuff. I would prefer you question things. Maybe we can learn something together, you know? So my thing is to leave them with that. Be curious go ask questions about yourself about your history about your ancestors okay um and i also want to say thank you to you i know we've been trying to do this for a little bit we were like paying tag a little bit but that's okay so i appreciate you no, very I appreciate much you. Yeah. thank you so much for being on my podcast yes girl i love it i feel famous now stop it <laughs> and we will definitely be doing a part two because i have so much more to say Cindy. But thank you all so much for listening to another episode of Amanda's Mindset. And if you enjoyed the show, if you would like it, share it with somebody you think would benefit from it, I would really appreciate it. And until next time, guys. Oh, girl, you a natural. <laughs>